Hey all, thanks for joining me here in the machine shop. Uh, I've been wanting to do this video for a little while now, but I ran into a snag. And also as well, when April hit, after I got back from Branson, it's just been crazy busy here in the shop in the small engine world. I mean, I've just been swamped. I haven't had a whole lot of extra time, you know, to work on some of my projects, you know, trying to keep up with customer demand. So what happened on this, like I said, I wanted to do this video a while ago. I did that port work on that Farmall all super C. If you seen some of my videos uh, I'll have to put a link up for this in the end of this video if you guys want to check that out but uh, when it comes to doing the intake and exhaust manifold on these I wanted to go through and do some port work as well on this so when I went to go do this and I actually put the manifold in the glass bead cabinet and started cleaning it up unfortunately I found a, a couple holes that were in the exhaust port on it so that wasn't going to be a good thing and that was kind of a bad day when I found that out but no, it's not the end of the world. I was able to get a new manifold through this through Steiner Tractor. In fact, uh, this is the old manifold right here. Maybe you can see the holes in here. Maybe not, but got one right there. There's a big hole, and there's one starting right there. So, but a new manifold would be a lot easier to work with anyway. So let's get busy, and let's start doing some port work on this uh, manifold. and. You know, get this done. We're going to be getting closer. I can get this tractor back together and start doing some pulling with it. Look right down there in the exhaust manifold. See those holes right there? Yeah, I found that. That uh, that can definitely ruin the day right there. So, so that manifold there is junk. So, you know, any of you out there working on your own tractors there, I found that's a good spot to check this to make sure there's no holes in it. But this is the new manifold here that I got from Steiner. And I took my magic marker and just traced this out. This is where I'm going to open them up a little bit uh, just to get a little bit better. As you can look in there, I mean, it's not terrible in there as far as the casting goes. But that one there is kind of rough a little bit in that exhaust port. But, you know, the point is we can make this better than what it is. So we're just going to go through and clean this up and get it smoothed out and get it painted up and then I can put it on a tractor. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to work on this. Just taking a quick break here after about a half hour grinding this on these uh, two ports over here. Uh, I'll bring you guys over here and uh, I'll show you how it's starting to come together and what the shape is looking like compared to the existing ports when I got started on this. Um, this manifold is going to come out really nice. It's always nice when you have new stuff to work with, you know, as opposed to some older stuff, you know, that's had carbon and stuff run through it through the years and it gets kind of rough so this is really nice material to work with okay here's the other two round ports um what they look right now what they look like and here's what i've been working on with these two over here so 
they're, they're starting to come to shape here. So got them opened up a little bit. So you know, I've, I've opened this port up probably about an eighth of an inch from what it was. So that's what's nice. This material here is really meaty on this. So you definitely have some room to take off on here if you want to open these up. So which is nice. So I don't know if these new manifolds here, if they they've thickened them up a little bit, but yeah, I'm impressed so far. Yeah, I got the round ones all roughed in, so we just got to take and uh, sand these out and polish them. So now I'm going to work on these two uh, square ports right here. So in order to do these ports, I'm going to take and uh, I'm going to use this little triangle carbide burrator. This works out really good for kind of trying to keep that square contour in the port. Now, of all the ports that are worse, these two ports right here are the worst as far as being rough. So I don't know if you can see that or not right here. I'll try to get it up closer to you. Yeah, I'm not doing a very good job trying. Well, maybe you can see a little bit, but the inside of that port is really rough. Maybe you can see it a little bit, but... Get this swapped out and go with the triangle, so... I've got about an hour um, and that's so far this roughing these four in right here so if you're going to do this kind of work everyone you definitely want to do this when you actually got some time you can sit down and do this because you know I don't mind doing port work but in a way I hate it just because it's so tedious so kind of another reason too why I've got out of gotten out of doing it and uh, race motors and stuff too because with the technology and stuff they have today, they're making heads pretty decent where they flow good now with all the CNC work, so. Well, here's the old manifold here and what we started out here with the ports and how they looked. And this wrapped up here after a couple hours later. Got all these all done, opened up. I'm blending it out a little bit. Uh, these came out really nice and pleased on this. Uh, I can only go in so far obviously before you run into the back side of the manifold and it starts to curve up you know into the snorkel right here but i uh yeah this is 
the, these new manifolds, they just clean up so nice on here. I think this, uh, this came out, you know, pretty decent in my opinion. All right, everyone, that's what we're going to wrap up in this video here. Thanks for hanging out and checking this out here. Um, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to sit through and go through the whole two hours and make a two hour video on this, showing you how to do port work on this manifold. That would, that would get real old and tiring very fast. And trust me, doing this kind of work, it's boring and tedious. So, but uh, you might be asking yourself, well, gee, Shaw, you know, you spent two hours on that manifold. You know, is it really going to gain you that much more power? Well, I really don't have an answer for that. But, you know, doing some of the race motors I have done, you know, in the past for people and it actually having access to a flow bench, you know, I could pull, pull numbers on the heads before I started and when I finished. Theoretically, yes, I should gain more power. But, you know, on a tractor, that's what we're going to find out. So this is trial and error. Now, being the Super C here, if I'm not mistaken, it seems like I looked the horsepower up on this tractor, and I believe it was 23 horse at the draw bar. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but we'll just go with that for right now. Now, for a number. And I say it would be a win when it's all said and done. Once I get the tractor tuned and everything, if I could get an extra 10 horse out of this, I mean, I think that would be great. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for. And, you know, not only that, too, you know, I've opened these ports up a little bit on the manifold, and something else I'm looking the gain too with this tractor is at least I've noticed it on the derby motors when you change the ports and the head and the exhaust ports it, it gives it a different exhaust tone and exhaust and you know with this tractor if I can get a different tone out of the exhaust where it has a deeper roar to it that's kind of what I'm looking for as well so another question you might be asking me okay well if you're going to be using this tractor in a farming field well, this modification that you've done on the cylinder head, well, isn't that considered cheating for a farm and field class? Okay, well, if we go back, maybe, you got to remember this tractor is in 1952. So this tractor here is 70 years old. So now if we go back, say, maybe to 1960 or something, we're doing tractor pulls. Yes, I would say that would be cheating because you got to remember I'm running a stock cam in this tractor. I'm not running oversized valves. And something else too, a lot of these older tractors that have been around, they've got overboard kits that they're putting in these tractors, okay? Now with a Super C, I'm still running the stock Super C bore, which is three inch and one eighth. I mean, I could have did the overboard kit in this tractor. Uh, you can get a three inch uh, 250 overboard kit, but you know, the cylinders and the bores were really good shape in this tractor. I couldn't justify spending the money to do that. So I think maybe at one time, uh, in this tractor's life, someone might have did a rebuild kit on it. So am I cheating in a farm and field class? I say no. If anything, with all the overboard kits and these over track, older tractors out there for what I'm doing right now, if anything, I say I'm catching up and I'm equalizing the field. So, but that's where we're going to end this video at. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Hey, before you get going, if you're just seeing this video for the first time on this port and polish work on this intake and exhaust manifold for your farm all, if you want to check out the cylinder head work that I did on this tractor with the valve job and resurface and the port and polish work I did on that as well, I'll take and put a video link for that right up here for you.